stand at ease. DJ Private Ryan is in the mix. This is DJ Private Ryan. Big up UKSOCASIN.com. Best website out there. Private Ryan says so. in a musical background. Um, my father and I, we used to play music together when I was young. Like really young. Five years old, I was playing final and playing old rockers and all those things. So, um, I come from a culture, I mean, it, it, like anyone who lives in Trinidad, um, I I think that music is universal. So I don't think that you should be limited to one thing. So, uh, my style of playing really adopted was adopted because I had a belief that you should be able, as a DJ, you should be able to play everything and please a lot of diverse uh, crowds because you, every party is not going to be the same, every country is not going to be the same, every territory is not going to be the same and you really need to be able to play for different audiences every time. So um, the Private Ryan thing, I'm driven by versatility, I'm driven by a drive to really expose the fact that music is a universal language and I don't think that you know, anyone should confine themselves to a box of anyone genre. Okay, okay, okay. It's interesting you should say that. I'm gonna, I've actually got an interesting question to ask you, but I'll get to that later. What I want to find out is, you started DJing from a young age. Yes. And obviously you were inspired by, I think it was your dad, was it playing music? Well, my dad wasn't really a DJ, but he, had, he has a very vast record collection. So okay. like, I learned a lot of music. I know a lot of things that people probably don't expect that I know. So why DJing? Why not songwriting? Why not producing? I mean, I know, I know DJ comes. I guess I guess it was just my calling. I mean, I don't know where um, this will take me at this, you know, in the future. But as of now, DJing is what I love. I love moving crowds. I love being able to read and adapt and and be able to mix for people. Okay. Know? So that's what I'm doing right now. So you like to be? So I'm actually intrigued. So. You, as, a, as a DJ, right, you strive on be excelling yourself, yes. right, improving yourself, reaching the next, basically the next level. What inspires you? What goes in, in your mind when you walk in into a club and you say, you know what, this is what I'm going to play tonight. What, what, what goes in your mind? I, I just want to find out. To tell you the truth, whenever I walk into a party, I never know what I'm going to play. Okay. I, 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 I'm a blank slate when I walk in because the thing is, is that you have scenarios where um, you don't know what the vibe of a crowd is. You can never predict it. It could be one that is low, one that's high. You could be dealing with a DJ before you that has played every new song there is right now and you have to be able to reset the party and just take it to where you want it. Um, there are a lot of different scenarios that you could face. I face them, uh, of most of them, most of them, you know, so. so. How do you overcome them? Because if you walk into uh, a fix or a party, yeah, and it's high, and the DJ that just played, mm -hmm. yeah, just killed it, and you walk in, how, can, how do you match that? As well, I mean, it depends. It's either you can carry on that height or you have to create your own. You know, so like it's a science, like like DJing like anything else, people would not realize it's a science. In order for you to just like anything else, for you to be good 
that anything, you need to be able to understand it and, and people, right? And um, people, all of your world are very different. So you need to understand what would move them. You have to put yourself in the crowd and see you know, what would move me at this point in time. You can't play for yourself, you have to play for them. That that is the most that is the most essential part of being a DJ. Play for the people, not yourself. That's, that's quite interesting to say that. That's quite interesting. So you are not just a DJ. Yes. But I think you're also reaching for the stars, is my saying. Producing and doing other stuff. What is it? What do you do as well outside of all? Well, um, outside of well, if people don't know, um, I actually did my degree. I did a marketing degree in FIU. Um, so I studied in, in Florida for like about five years. Um, so I have a, an, an ex, a, a background in marketing and everything as well, which I actually incorporate into Private Ryan. It's a, it's a whole marketing thing. Okay. So like I take what I've learned um, academically and then practically use it in terms of my business because I, I approach it as a business. It's not just you know showing up and playing. People would not realize that, but there are a lot of things that go on behind the scenes, whether it be um, taking bookings, um, negotiation, marketing, finance, um, practice as well. You need to be able to be on top, and then even the actual recording of the podcast. There are a lot of things that go into you know the whole private Ryan thing, thing that people get like in terms of the podcast and be showing up to events and stuff. So like it's 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 work. And you know, I, I, I am driven by the business aspect of it as well. And I, I have other things going on for me, you know, behind the scenes that are not music oriented as well. But you know, those are things that I keep to myself. Okay. <laughs> so you are in hot demands, for those that don't know, in Florida, right? Well, not so just Florida. Just not just Florida, but obviously it's other places more in America. Okay. So, how has the experience been? How is it obviously moving from Trinidad? I know you studied in Miami, and then you started playing there. How has how has the experience been? Um, in terms of other countries. Yeah. Um, it's exhilarating actually. It's something that I can't describe. It's like you like you go one like last week I was in Washington, I did a carnival and here in London I was doing like a like an open format kind of party where I get to play dancehall and pop and hip hop and soca and then next week I'll be in Houston and then the following week I'll be in Bermuda and each one is different. Um, and the thing is is that you need to reinvent yourself each time. You can't be the same person because you don't know what you're getting yourself into, so it requires a lot of research. Um, and, and part of your natural intuition as a DJ to be able to adapt to situations. So, um, you know, the thing is is that I, I really wouldn't trade it right now for anything because it's something I love to do generally. Like, I really generally love to do it. And um, I just look forward to every gig. Every gig is a new challenge, you know, so like it, it, it's really good. And I get to meet new people, I, I make new friends, it's, it's really nice. So how do you manage it flying from one time zone to the next and then well, your mind has to stay fresh for mm. you to be creative, for you to be a friend? Yeah, how do you manage it? The, um, the secret tip for me is, is, is you have to manage your rest. Okay. And um, like let's say this, I came from Trinidad like two days ago and so like I'm five hours ahead right now and I know that I have to go back and then I have to go to Houston which will be five hours behind. So I know like um, closer to when I'm going to leave I'm going to try and put my body back into a cycle where I, I'll be able to adapt because you know I'll be up at different hours and you know sleeping at different hours and stuff. So you know I just I try to adapt. That, that's the best you can do. I, know, I mean there's no excuse. I mean tired, sick, you have to do what you have to do. I know, I know. So uh, where are you going next? Um, well, I'll be in Houston next week so on July 7th, and then um, the weekend after that, I believe I am in where am I? Bermuda. Okay. Right. Yes, I'm in Bermuda. What's happening in Bermuda? Anything? They have a party called Fantasy Island. Right. So you've been involved in the um, music industry, and obviously as a DJ, you're passionate about music since the 90s. Yes. I'm not sure when in the 90s you obviously can tell us that, but music has changed. We now have synthesized beats. We have rhythms and soca, and people that were once passionate about music are no longer. Well, how do you feel about that? I don't think music is a stagnant thing. I think that music evolves naturally over time. No matter what um, the, the average person may say or do, music will always um, evolve because there, there's a, a fusion that happens. 
um, let's say for example with soca. Soca uh, back in the day was driven by more brass section, so like you'll have more brass and, and live instrument. And um, then they, they evolved into soca. And then now you see a fusion with pop beats. But you see how music goes full circle because one of the biggest soca songs, which is Bottle of Rum, and people's champion by Benjai, Marshall had Bottle of Rum. You see that it was live instruments. And live instrument was what traditional soca was. So you see that you know it evolves. And and, and the thing is it applies to all genres. Like they, they, there's hip-hop, there's dancehall, dancehall. All right now people there's some people saying that dancehall is dead. But part because you know they think cartel is, is incarcerated right now but um everything comes full circle and you know the thing is is that i don't think that i think people should embrace change because change may bring new ideas and um, new interpretation as to what music is i don't think music is one dimensional it, it, like you need to open your mind to a lot of different things and by that it it, it will bring new aspects to music and even maybe even create new genres so you need to keep that in mind you know so just repeating my question again so what you say Mm -hmm. So those that say soca is not going downhill, but it's losing its, I won't say its essence, but the real soca, because now it's emulating the dance room, the rhythm. I wouldn't yeah? agree with that actually. You wouldn't agree with that? Because what? I think, I think if you listen to some of the, the most popular and best soca that came out of, let's say I'll just use Trinidad, not to say that the other islands don't have good soca, but just out of Trinidad last year and this year, you will see that the music has spread and it has spread worldwide. I can literally go everywhere and play bottle of rum and people know the song and, and even if you've never heard it, they like it. So if you're telling, uh, and people champion, if you're telling me that that's aggressive, I don't agree because the thing is, is that it's, it, they have struck a formula where the sound is accepted um, in different places and, it, and, it, and it, it comes about quickly. And there are a lot of different examples of, of, of that. So I would say that that Soka is losing anything. I think it's just evolving. And I think um, a lot of traditional people may argue that as has shown in history it always happens. Reggae music, they argued and reggae um, went into dancehall. But dancehall became very popular. Dancehall has gone very far. I don't think that um, we should fight the natural um, evolution of music. Okay. So, uh, what's your top five songs at the moment? If I was to say, <laughs> no, you know what? Because you're versatile, mm -hmm. right? I'm not just gonna choose one. I'm just gonna say it across the board. Top five in any order. In any order, yeah. Um. All right. So I think I'll break it down. In terms of soca, I think that um. The top two songs would be People's Champion and Bottle of Rum. Everywhere I go, those songs are big. It doesn't matter where you play them. Um, in terms of dancehall, Conscience is doing a lot of good things. So I think Galabubble right now is still, you know, him and Mr. Vegas are going rocking down Galabubble. They're right now they're, they're, they're battling for the number one dancehall song right now. Um, in terms of reggae, I like Christopher Martin's Cheetah Spray. Um, that's a, you know, some views may not agree here, but, but it's really a big song. So, I love, and Stephen Marley, I love, um, I love Stephen Marley and David Marley, A Face of the Heart and Pale Moonlight. I know this, you only said five, but I'm just calling genres in terms of my top. Uh, in terms of pop, of course, Rihanna, where have you been? It's, um, it's really big right now. Um, they wanted, glad you came, somebody I used to know. Uh, those things are, are really big. And um, in terms of hip hop, um, what's my favorite song in hip hop? It's hard to tell. I really like a lot of stuff actually. In terms of hip hop, I, I like people know I'm a really I'm a big. What? Just give me one. Right now, boy. There's one. I'm thinking of it. It's a song actually called Amen by Meek Mill. Meek okay. Mill and Drake. Okay. I really like that song. I really like that song. So I just want you to give the masses out there kind of some advice mm -hmm. because you've been passionate about music since day one, yes. right? You grew up around music. Some of us can encounter music at an older age. If I wanted to become a DJ, right? If I was interested in obviously bringing music to the masses, what advice would you give me? Um, in terms of 
DJing, I think you should always respect the traditional aspect of it. Um, DJing is not just about uh, getting a program and being able to put songs together. You have to understand the science behind putting the songs together in the first place. You have to understand um, old music to understand new music. You have to understand where the new music came from. A lot of them sample stuff from old music. Um, you have to understand creativity in terms of the flow of music and in terms of how to move a crowd. Uh, it's not just about putting two songs together that can mix. It's about two songs that tell a story. Um, you need to understand that you cannot be selfish as a DJ. You're not playing to yourself. I can play all my favorite songs one after the other, but that may not necessarily move the crowd that is paid to come in here and play. Um, you have to, you know, respect the elder DJs who are paid to do for you as well. Um, a lot of them have worked really hard in terms of uh, um, playing in parties and, and building a certain vibe and, and creating a brand for themselves. And I think DJing is not just about playing music, but building your own brand and building your own style. So I think I think it, it is really important that everybody owns their own style. And, um, you know, just really keep practicing and trying to be the best that you can be. Okay, so who do you take the inspiration from? Because, um, I'm inspired by a lot of what DJs. Um, Alright, so in internationally, uh, I would say Jazzy Jeff, technically, he's a very sound DJ. Okay. Hip hop wise, I love to hear him play. Um, in terms of open format, the late DJ AM, who I used to follow previously, he was a really good creative DJ. Um, in terms of dancehall, um, the charisma of Tony Mataron, the juggling style of Renaissance, um, soca wise, they have really good um, soca DJs. Back to basics is very creative with soca. Um, in terms of house, I listen to whether it be from uh, Avicii to TSO to Skrillex. I, I, I appreciate everybody's style, and that is how I would learn different things and be able to create my own. So, like, I appreciate and respect others, and then I create my own, and then I, I do my own style. Okay. So, just to conclude, I know you receive about a million hits or downloads from just your podcast mm -hmm. on your website. I just want you to tell the masses. Is there anything that you want to shout out about DJ Private Ryan? Well, I'd just like them to follow me. Uh, follow DJ Private Ryan Music .com. Um, Get all my podcasts. I've done a lot of stuff over the years. I started since I think it was 2007. I can't really remember. But um, there's a lot of stuff on the website. A lot more to come. A lot of different genres. If you're into hip hop, soca, house, um, reggae, um, everything is on the site. So like, if you can just follow it, go to the website, download. Feel free to join the uh, fan page on Facebook, the, the mix group on our Facebook as well. All the information is actually put in the mixes as well. So like, you'll hear all the drums and tell you how to find me. DJ Private Ryan at gmail.com is how you can find me for bookings. And you know, just look out for me. So when they want to book faces, DJ Private Ryan. Gmail. Okay. Yes. Well, DJ Private Ryan, I must say, you are my guilty pleasure in terms of music. So it's been a pleasure, an immense pleasure. Thank you very and much. And I wish you all the best. But just one thing, what does the future hold for you? Undefined. If, if, if four years ago, if you asked me if I'd be trapped in the world DJing, I would have told you that that's probably not going to happen. I don't know. I, you know, that. I mean, I knew I would have been doing it, but I didn't know I would have been doing it at the level that I would have been. And um, a lot of the opportunities have even come my way this year because I'll be going to places like South Africa and a lot of different places. Um, I never would have imagined it. Um, I just aim to be the best I can, and then my future is, is limitless. Okay. Okay. Well, like I said, it's been a pleasure, and we look forward to more future installments. And. You killed it out there. That's all I can say. <laughs> I mean, there's nothing else to say, but you killed it out there. So thank, thank you, you very much. much. I wish you all the best. Thank you. I don't have to answer for I could have any girl in the car.